Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Master Paul. And today is November 6, 2017. And I have just returned from a month-long trek, uh, including Europe and a stopover in Thailand for about a, a week on the first side and three days on the second side. And then I also uh, had a layover in Japan. So that was a quite interesting experience too. So it's been a very long uh, time away from you, my Facebook family. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to reconnect with you. I'm kind of watching the screen because a moment ago it wasn't really working that good, kind of lagging. But um, today when I woke up and I said, okay, today is my first day back on Facebook live stream. What do I talk about? What is the subject matter? And literally what came to me was embracing change with grace now I honestly don't know why that is what I need to teach about today because I haven't had a great deal of it happening in my life uh, uh, you know like life-changing change but apparently it has been pretty predominant in other people's lives which is typically why I need to teach it <laughs> so in this case that's why I'm connecting and teaching on it today so if, as always, I will be uh, grounding everything I share with the wisdom of my spiritual teacher and father, Master Shaw. I'll be applying the wisdom he brings to humanity to help us bring and keep balance in our lives. And I will be um, showering and sprinkling that wisdom along with today's teaching on how to embrace change with grace. So I see some new names popping in there today and a lot of folks that I haven't seen in a long time. So welcome to Deborah Allen, welcome Catherine. Uh, Aloha Ale, welcome Don Robinson. Aloha to Luna. And welcome also to Kathy Arnold and Janice Crosby. Welcome Kate, thank you all for joining. It's great to see you all. Uh, Aloha Nina Kaiser and welcome Holly. Welcome also to Vanessa and welcome Lisa Zarniak. <coughs> Aloha Shelly, welcome to Janice Crosby. And welcome also to Lori and Kristen Rojas. Thank you, Kristen. And also welcome to uh, Crane. Aloha, Kristen Strachan. I love Kristen Strachan's post. She's always got something uh, tongue-in-cheek to share. Welcome also Pamela Carmo. Welcome Sharon Dodd. Welcome Dolores. And welcome also to Alicia Jade Kwan. Big crowd today. Always happy to see that. Welcome also Michelle and Aloha Angie Kinney, Aloha Nikki Davis. So as the uh, Facebook stream goes out and letting other people know that we're live today, we'll continue. Uh, I'll share with you a little bit about my trip and then go straight into the, the teachings and the, the blessings. First thing I want you to know is I have been elevated in my ability to serve you. How is that? Well, whenever you spend a couple of weeks with a, a spiritual teacher, in my case, my spiritual teacher, Master Shah, the opportunity to elevate your frequency is very good. And Master Shah has spent the last four months in what's called Biguan, which means silence, a meditative silence. And during that time, he increased his frequency. Being a student of his, uh, a very devoted student, um, when, in going to these retreats, we have the opportunities to also increase our frequencies. And so that will serve you. That's my purpose of doing everything that I do is to be a better servant to you. And so uh, I will be sure towards the end of this presentation today to offer everybody a blessing using the new and higher frequencies and powers that I have been blessed to receive. So I hope you can stick around. So welcome also to Missy Dodd. And aloha to Michelle Lynn. Welcome. Thank you, uh, David Jewelboy, for joining. <clears throat> and so I can't, because of the, the uniqueness of the retreats, um, we're not allowed necessarily to tell you about the, uh, what happened during the retreats. Uh, but I can share with you that uh, we are very, very blessed to have a spiritual teacher like Master Shah on earth today because his total mission in life is to serve humanity, humanity in Wan Ling. Wan Ling means all souls. And he does that by assisting us to self-clear our spiritual debts, 
and expanding love and peace and harmony. And so I've received some new toys, new music with higher frequencies. Inside my little satchel here is a crystal ball that carries some higher frequencies. I can't see the future in it. It carries higher frequencies. I received in here, which is what I'm going to bless everybody with, a new calligraphy card. And uh, I'll have to locate it. But this card, once I locate it, was power was transmitted to it. Uh, very, very high level power was transmitted to it. So I will be using that to serve you as well today. So let us go ahead and connect heart to heart, soul to soul. Please, as appropriate, hit the share button. Let other people know about this, that we're live today. And allow me to serve you. So we place our hands in soul light, soul service hand position. Drop the left hand in front of the heart center. The right hand remains pointed towards heaven. Close your eyes and I will call in the beings of light. And we will move forward with this service. They're all layers of the divine, the Tao, and the source. All of our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. They're all mother and father, shurfus. All Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, Lama, Sifas, Gurus, Saints, beloved Jesus, beloved Mother Mary. <clears throat> all of heaven's animals, angels, healing angels and archangels. We love you all, honor you all, deeply appreciate, respect you all. We ask you to please be present at this time to join us. We ask, as appropriate, that you assist each and every one of us with releasing our blockages to change so that we can embrace whatever change occurs in our life. Please bless me to offer the highest, the most appropriate teachings today so that when I share on the subject matter, the words that I use and the wisdom that is shared touches the most hearts, awakens the most souls, and assists these individuals with change dear the source soul song of love peace and harmony transmitted to all souls in all universes we love you we honor you we deeply appreciate you we invite you at this time to please turn on and we invite all souls in all universes to join us and as we chant love peace and harmony to join our hearts and souls together let us release our blockages of the day and prepare to receive the nourishment of the love and the light. Let us begin. Lula, lula. For all those that are new, this is a blessing. Close your eyes and receive. Lula, lula, la, li. Lula, lula, li, lula. Lula, li, lula. Lula Hali Lula Woi Woshin Arling Woi Tran Ran Lay Hong Shang Shang I Ping on Shang I Ping on I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, feels very good to reconnect, huh? So welcome also to uh, Monica Castro. Thank you so much for joining and, and uh, your service, Monica. Thank you also, Shana Sug. Welcome, welcome, Jagmeet. Welcome, Bonnie Robinson. Uh, welcome also to Pat JD and Igor. If anyone else I missed you, please forgive me. I see Shirley Martin and Gracie Story. Also welcome Becky Lafave, Jennifer Caress Smith. I think I've got everyone. Forgive me if I missed you. So today, embracing change with grace. I want to hear from each and every one of you. 
if you've had some significant change in your life recently, what that change has been, what you're willing to share, right? Brief. We don't need novels. Brief. Okay? And um, maybe put a number to it. Uh, you know, I'm good, number two. I'm still rocked by this and don't know what to do with it, number 10, right? Kind of give me a feel for where you're at. This was the major change. This is where I'm at. We'll work with some of the wisdom and teachings of Master Shaw on how to transform these conditions into ones where, that are manageable and of great value to us. So um, what I'm going to do while you are sharing is I'm going to connect with heaven. I'm going to ask them to give us some guidance uh, on change, the nature of it, the power and significance of how it could potentially benefit us, uh, any additional information that heaven wishes to share at this time, to give us some insights from heaven's perspective. Because very often in this three-dimensional world, being stuck here on earth with our five senses, the touch, taste, feel, uh, uh, our five senses and our emotions, we can tend to very easily get stuck in our world. And heaven has a very different perspective on things. So I'm going to offer you some guidance from their perspective as a beginning to this. Okay? And this is what's called flow or divine flow for those that are not familiar. Basically, heaven borrows my mouth. My beloved children, this is Kuan Yin, Buddha of compassion. I have come to speak on behalf of heaven on the subject matter of change with grace. I come to many's beck and call throughout this world, especially those in great suffering. There is many cries for help. And with each cry, I offer my greatest love, my greatest service to assist that soul to awaken from their dream to awaken from their drama, to release the attachment to the conditions they have found themselves in. I wave my fa cheese of my thousand hands and wipe away the dogma of disbelief. I wash away the fear I bless away the false teaching and information that has been accepted as true. And this blessing allows those who have received it to see what they could not see before. Here the words from those they need to hear that they could not hear before and act more accurately and efficiently than from the immobilizing place from which they were in. This can be accomplished on your own by applying the same things that I do spiritually. This includes releasing the attachment to how it should be. So many on earth have great pain and suffering because of attachments to how they believe things should be. Releasing attachments is as simple as removing the veil, which is what I do when I offer a blessing. How do you remove the veil? You look at the attachment. 
you acknowledge the attachment and you refuse to accept it as your truth anymore. Another layer of release that I offer souls is the release of fear. Fear very often comes from a lack of knowledge, insecurity of the future direction, which is common with change. Insecurity financially, emotionally, physically, and so forth. Fear is because of a lack of understanding and information. So how do you fix this on your own? You choose to see the fear. You choose to acknowledge the fear. And then you choose to educate yourself emotionally, physically, spiritually, or in whatever way needs to be accomplished. If it is a fear financially, you educate yourself to get a position that takes care of the money fear. If it is a relationship change, you educate yourself by joining groups of those who have lost relationship and are supportive of each other. In other words, you move yourself from where you are at to a place that is supportive and loving. Very often, those in this dimension get stuck and spin their wheels because they get stuck in the fears and in the uh, attachments. So this is my wisdom for you today. More will be shared during this live stream on how to accomplish this. I am honored to serve each and every one of you. Call my name and I will be there instantly to serve you as I can. This is Kuan Yin. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, thank you, thank you, beloved Kuan Yin. Ah, what a beautiful message. Thank you, Shirley Marking. Missed you too. Thank you, everybody. Welcome, Robin Toth. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm happy to be back. Angie Kenny, welcome. Uh, welcome, Heather Houston. Welcome, Lori. Lori says, changes include reorganization at work. She ended up getting a demotion. She's hurt and unsure what she will end up doing. <clears throat> and she's at a six on this in terms of the uh, reaction level, how to deal with it. Husband passed away, says Robin, 10 months ago. She's still at a 10 on a 10 scale with this change. Gracie says, she'll be having a changing in the job field in May in the next year. And she'll be re relocating, getting closer to family. A new door will open for her, she feels. Good. Um, Becky Lavab, anger management. Last, uh, rough, was rough last week. It was an 8 on a 10 scale. Uh, Kate Nicole, lost a loved one last year. She's still working through that, 8 on a 10 scale. Okay, welcome, Julia Lawrence. I'm just reading through the rest of these. And welcome also to Manasu. Hopefully I said that name right. Mahansuk. Mahansuk. Namaste. Uh, Kathy Arnold. I was an eight on my health, now an improved to number five. Uh, before this, was first started receiving your precious teachings. Very grateful that that's improved. Thank you, Michelle, for your comments. Okay, aloha Colleen Russell, I'm new here, what's going on? <laughs> Put on your seatbelt Colleen. Uh, so hopefully you stick around long enough to become informed of this live stream. I do it Monday through Thursday and it's a complimentary service to assist people to 
work with life using spiritual wisdom and teachings. So uh, I was just in the middle of teaching using Kuan Yin. Uh, Kuan Yin, should I say, used me. She borrowed my mouth and offered a teaching on the subject matter of embracing change with grace. Okay, And welcome also to Donna Brandt. Happy that you've joined us. Thank you so much. So if you missed that flow, uh, Kuan Yin had some beautiful things to say. And we will uh, now start applying some of the wisdom and teachings. All right. Change. Change is, for each and every one of us, inevitable. We are, by nature, very, very much uh, appreciative of something we can depend upon. We can get up in the morning. We know we can depend on that alarm going off most of the time, getting us to work, uh, earning that paycheck once a week, and so forth. We know that um, there are certain things that we get into a pattern with. Patterns are habitual, they're comforting, they allow us to maintain our diet or our bad diet, they allow us to maintain watching our Wednesday night show that we fail to miss, uh, they allow us to have our comforts, our creature comforts, all the way to our once a week ice cream. When we have a shift in our patterns, it creates for us a discomfort. Um, by nature, literally, we cannot grow without change. It is almost an impossibility to grow without change. It's like saying 2 plus 2 is 4. Next day, 2 plus 2 is 4. Next day, 2 plus 2 is 4. How are you ever going to learn what 2 plus 3 is unless somebody teaches it to you? You have to have somebody step into your life give you a new equation and teach you how to, to do the new math. And that's, in essence, what life is. There are uh, a myriad of, of spiritual teachings out there from which there are a myriad of incredible wisdoms, all the way from the Buddhist teachings to the Christian teachings to the Quran. They all have incredible wisdom. There is no, uh, no one more right or wrong than another. Uh, amongst those wisdom and teachings is a, a thought that you may or may not accept, but bear with me as I give you this thought and see if it will assist you with change. The thought is this. Creator was one, one is all things, and that one knew itself to be everything, knew itself to be creator, knew itself to be uh, omnipotent, everything. But it could not experience, it could only know, because experience and knowing are two different things. And so imagine, if you will, that creator expanded itself, the Big Bang, or whatever you want to call it. Oof. All of a sudden, it's hundreds of billions and trillions of zeros of souls. And all of these souls are aspects of the one creator. That's where the concept of oneness comes from. Each of these souls are imbued and infused with original creator understanding and comprehension. Each of these souls are infused with original creator creation ability. Each of these souls are infused with creator love. Each of these souls are of and from creator. They are no less than creator and no more than creator. They are of and from creator. And they all are experiencers for the creator. Because before, the creator only knew itself to be the all and the everything. So imagine that to be what we are a part of. When you start to look at change from that much larger perspective, you are, in essence, an experiencer for your creator. You are part of the creator. You are a beautiful, loved, unconditionally loved, unconditionally accepted, unconditionally pre-approved part of the creator. There is literally nothing you can do to cause the Creator to be irritated with you, or hate you, or commit you to hell, or anything like that. That would be foolish for the Creator to say, I hate my left arm, but I love my right arm. We are all equally loved by our Creator. Now, change is something that we all have experiences in through the portions and courses of our life. Change has a precursor. In other words, something brings it about. This is very important to understand because going with this understanding that Creator is all things and we are part of Creator, we all, uh, when Creator expanded itself to, to make hundreds of billions and trillions and trillions of souls, we, you and I being one of them, we at that moment of expansion 
at that moment of expansion were as equally pure as our Creator, as equally karma free as our Creator, and as equally love as our Creator. We were all given, based on common agreed acceptance, free will. That free will came with choice. And with choice, choices were made that sometimes were not in perfect alignment with unconditional love. We might have made a selfish choice somewhere along the way. And so uh, this was a new experience for Creator. Wow, one of my souls made a choice that was not selfless. It was selfish. What a unique experience. The Creator didn't judge that selfish choice. The Creator said, wow, that's kind of cool. And that caused an expansion of creation because creation expands with every thought. Creation expands with every word, every action. Creation is an ongoing expansion. We are part of the source. And so when we have a negative thought or a positive thought, we are creating. But we are, in essence, creating our individual experience. We are a soul having an individual experience on behalf of our creator. No, again, you're not asked to accept, accept all of this as, as uh, uh, this must be it. This is just an overview perception of how we can deal with change. Because if we can move ourselves from the microcosmic place of the suffering and step out above it and look down on it, we can absolutely move through it with much greater grace. Several people mention that they're stuck because great loved ones have passed on and they're still stuck in a high level of pain. One person mentioned uh, great anger that they can't get through and past. Uh, another person mentioned uh, other pains associated with health. When we are in the, um, the source of our pain, when we are so stuck in it that we just can't seem to pop out of it, we must change our perspective. What did Kuan Yin say in her flow? She said, I come to that soul that's in pain and suffering. I clear what they can see so that they see more. I clear what they hear so that they can hear more. I give them new perspectives so that they can pop themselves out and move forward. She does that on a spiritual level. What in fact is she doing? She's helping clear aspects and portions of that person's spiritual debts their negativities that have built up in their life, that have built up so much that it feels like they're in a trapped bubble and they can't seem to find a way out. When a person gets in that place of change and they're, they're stuck like a deer in the headlights in fear, or they're stuck like a deer in the headlights in apprehension, worry, concern, I don't know what to do, uh, they just can't seem to move forward. They're stuck in what they can see, hear, and think. That is actually an aspect of karma. That is actually an aspect of a negative energy that has remained on their aura, if you will, or remained on their, um, their life process. And so when we back away from it and look at it from that higher perspective, we can see that, oh, this is just one of many experiences my soul has had and who knows how many lifetimes and now I am here at this current experience. But I am an aspect of Creator. I am loved unconditionally and have always been loved unconditionally. I am not wrong or right. I am just stuck in this moment in time and this inability to deal with this change. I'm stuck here because I have apprehension or I have fear or I have attachments to how things should be. Someone stuck in anger, for example. Why are they stuck in anger? Because they had massive attachments to how that life should have went or how something should have been and how they should not have been abused or misused or whatever it was, and it happened. So their attachment is pointing to something outside of them based on something they agreed to a long time ago. They agreed to it mentally, said it didn't fit this model, and now I'm stuck here and I'm gonna point to somebody outside of me. That's an attachment, and there's a fear on how to move forward 
and release these attachments because it might mean, as an example, taking responsibility. Right? Um, what about those that are um, have a lost one? There's an attachment to not to 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 um, pain of moving forward. Uh, you know, the, there's this place of fear. How do I move forward without this person? Uh, an attachment to those memories, an attachment to those experiences. Do you think that that person who has passed on at the soul level, do you think that they're enjoying watching you in pain and suffering? Or do you think they're going, please let go? The more you hurt, the more I hurt. So we, we need to take a look at where our blockages are in relation to that bigger picture. When we stop, as Kuan Yin, she, she said, this is how you do it. The first thing you do is you look at it and you acknowledge it. The second thing you do is you say, what, what is going on with this attachment? How can I release this attachment? What is about this is serving me? And then you release it. You have to look at it from the higher perspective. What about that attachment is serving you? If it's an attachment to, um, to uh, a money or attachment to a relationship, why? You have to go deep. I had to do this for myself a couple of weeks ago. I didn't like the answer that I found when I had to go deep. It wasn't a pleasant answer. I had to realize that, that my ego was why I was staying attached. Because I just went to the first level. Oh, why are you doing this? Oh, because of this. Okay, I ask a second question. But why, why are you doing that? Boiled down to my ego. And so sometimes we have to not give up on that first answer. We have to go deeper and ask for a true solution. Um, change is something that will never stop. Um, one of the things that we're dealing with right now in society is a great deal of change with the political structures that are out there, uh, violence, a great deal more um, uh, voices are being heard. Everyone has an opinion. There is insecurities on all fronts, uh, relationship, uh, finances, health. Uh, there is a great deal of um, areas in everybody's life that create great insecurity. I have a friend that, um, in, from my view, and she's watching today, I've, I told her, I said, you're my hero. And she says, why? I says, because you're not afraid to listen to guidance and do what guidance says. Guidance might say, it's okay, it's okay to leave that job. Something better is waiting for you. She is one of the few people that will actually listen to that and then bounce to a better position or bounce to something that will serve her soul journey better. Most of us are stuck in our attachment of we have to have this, we have to have that. If I don't have that 40-year you know, pension and the, the, the colored house and the white picket fence and blah, 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 then I'm not going to be happy. So change will happen whether, whether you like it or not. When a change occurs in our life, a health issue, we'll use that as an example. When you have a, a major health issue, could be a car accident that causes you to have back pain, it could be a, a severe sickness, a cancer, okay? That is a significant change. This causes us to look at life very differently. We start looking at life, most of us that have a significant change, from a negative perspective. No one told you that you had to look at it from that perspective. There are many people who are in a wheelchair, they look at life through a very positive perspective. So first thing to understand is we have a choice. When a change occurs, we have a choice as to how to respond to it. We can look at that cancer or that back pain or that auto accident or that loss of a job. We can look at that as a positive. Yeah, but how am I going to pay my bills in three weeks? Yeah, but how am I going to do this? Yeah, but da 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 da. We could do that, but does it serve you? One of the things that Master Shah teaches is that nothing ever happens accidentally. There's not a single thing in our life that is accidental. 
Nothing. It all has a root in our spiritual virtue, which brings us good things, and our spiritual debt, which brings us unpleasant things. We, however, have to understand that we could lose a job and it could be a very good thing. Really. I bet if I pulled all of you on here that you could look in your life and when you lost a job it actually turned out to be a good thing. At least most of us have lost a job at least three times. I would bet that one of those times it turned out to be a good thing. I would bet it. I bet I'm right. We, we have attachments and think that things may not be good, but they could be. It's how we look at it. So when a change occurs, it's very important for us to stay positive about that change. Why? Because first thing we want to do is look at it and go, this change happened for a reason. It's either related to my good virtue or it's related to my unpleasant spiritual debts. Either way, I need to remain positive. Here's why. If it's a good thing, then that means something good is coming from this health concern that I can't see. Maybe this car accident will lead to a million dollar uh, uh, windfall. Okay, Maybe because I uh, this cancer was discovered, I can clear it and clear out this spiritual debt, this karma that brought it to me and remain alive for another 20 years. But it requires a perspective that starts out with positivity. Okay. When we fail to not look at everything with positivity, then we drag ourselves down. What possible value is there for us ever in remaining in a negative place? There just isn't. And it doesn't matter what that change is. If it comes from uh, some stuff that directly affects us, like a health issue, or stuff that comes from the outside, like a job or a loss of a loved one, it is irrelevant where it comes from. If you can convince me or God or anyone else that there's a positive and staying in a negative place about that, then you could probably make a million dollars selling books on it because everybody seems to like staying there, but there is never a value in it. If you went to a psychologist, they might ask you, what do you get out of that? Because there's always something that we get out of it if we choose to stay in it. Some, it could be people feel sorry for me. It could be uh, this is where um, this is where I enjoy being at. This is where I am at. So I just this is where I'm at, and I enjoy staying there. Okay, well that's where you're at, and that's why you enjoy staying there. But if you enjoy being in that place of sadness, in that place of grief, in that place of suffering, in that place of pain, you might want to look at what value it brings to you. Because once you can isolate the value that it brings to you, you can pop out of it. You have to ask the hard question. It's not easy. I know some of you are simmering right now. Some of you that have lost loved ones, you're like, so you're telling me that I like being here? Yeah, on some levels, that's exactly true. And it's not easy to hear. But if you ask yourself, why do you like staying there? What are you getting out of it? Then, and you have to ask the deep question, and you have to go deep, you will get an authentic answer. Then you have the tools to pop out of it. Because I promise you, the loved one that's crossed over is exceedingly sad that, that you have not moved forward. Because they try to move forward. They cannot move forward into that loving place until you fully let go and you accept. Uh, with love that everything has a reason that their soul is involved in the process of them crossing over so I know I'm bouncing around from health to, 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 to loss of life but I'm trying to cover a variety of, of areas in which change can impact us both positively and negatively and how we can uh, deal with it at a very real straightforward level so Master Shah teaches that everything happens for a reason karma karma will take our life and make other people sad. Karma will take the people we love's life and make us sad. But how long we hold on to it is completely up to us. Our perspective on it, is it a positive? Is it a negative? Maybe the soul chose to leave at that time because it had 
a very high calling. Maybe that soul's calling was to return and uh, become a child that comes into this new era that we're moving into, the soul light era, and be that child that is a light being that literally saves hundreds of thousands of lives. And it could not do that in the current era. You don't know. Heaven knows. The soul knows. We down here, we're stuck with our third dimensional perspectives and we think that we get it. We must realize that everything happens for a reason regardless. Why did you have that car accident that brings the back pain that has stayed with you for four years? Karma. Ask forgiveness for you and your ancestors harming other people's backs. Do you think it was the first time that you had that back pain? Absolutely not. It's not the first time. It is probably the 10th or 20th time that you have had back pain for the previous 19 lives and now is the 20th life. Why does it keep coming back? Because we haven't processed through it. We haven't addressed it with positivity. All change can be done with grace when we address it with a positive, more inclusive perspective. When we see it from our very limited pain place, when we see it from that place of attachment, when we see it from that place of fear, we just simply cannot rise above it. So we have to go, okay, first of all, everything has a reason. Secondly, it doesn't mean that whatever happened is a negative. It could mean that this is an opportunity to clear this negativity out by asking for forgiveness, by keeping a positive perspective, and moving through it, however it comes to me. It's very easy to slip back into that negative perspective, part of its pattern, part of its karma, but no one's gonna come in there and, and just rip the Band-Aid off, guys. You have to be the one to uh, uh, constantly choose that positive thought. If you find yourself in a constant place of depression, it's still karma. And so that's when you need to ask for help outside of yourself. Come, go to a psychologist, get a pharmaceutical if you need it. Come to somebody like myself who can do blessings. Uh, we can invite Kuan Yin, heaven. I have a new dot eye calligraphy. The spiritual blessings can remove a lot of the spiritual debts. But don't allow yourself to just sit there in, in an eddy and think that in any way, shape, or form, it's positive. Because if you're staying in a negative place from change, there's no possible good that can come from it. Embracing change with grace is a process. It's one where uh, I can speak with it with this with confidence, but I wasn't always in that place. I used to get battered down a lot when I went through change. I used to hate it. I used to really be irritated by it because my patterns. I like things that I can depend upon. But change can, does, and will occur. What would happen to each of us if we, what would happen tomorrow if somebody pulls the plug on the electricity, uh, power grid goes down, solar flare, literally a solar flare can take out the entire earth, okay? If somebody pops one nuclear bomb, one nuclear bomb in the atmosphere about 3,000 feet up, half the earth can be out of electricity. Didn't know that, did you? We are always daily on the precipice of things going south for the winter, losing the entirety of your 40-year pension, blah, blah, blah. I can do on and on and on and on. 30% of the people are gonna get cancer, blah, blah, blah. Does it matter? Where's our focus? These things are possible. Do we want to accept whatever change comes to us with grace and positivity. Life is an experience. Heaven is where we came from. We are experiencers for our soul and for our creator. If you go through this entire life, I'm in a place of suffering and negativity, why even be here, right? Didn't learn the experience. Start again and go through more of it. That's what's gonna happen unless we wake up and grab that change and love it with grace. Ah, okay, I'm not sure I can really be appreciative of this loss of this job in this moment, but I know that there's something going on here 
that is going to bring a positive. I just can't see it yet. And I know that there might be karma going on here. Maybe it's good karma that's going to bring me a better job. Maybe it's unpleasant karma, and I've, I've caused other people to lose jobs in previous times that I don't know about. Either way, I'm going to choose the positive track. I am going to proactively find a better job, and I am going to ask forgiveness if I have ever caused anybody to lose a job. That's looking at thing, uh, a change with the right perspective, with a graceful perspective. I have cancer. Okay. It's not the end of the world. Doesn't matter what the doctors have said. That's all controlled media BS. Okay. I'll say the full world. It's controlled media bullshit. That's the full word. Okay. The reality is there are more cures for cancer out there than anything out there in the medical industry. The medical industry is about a 4% success rate. Everything else is a 20 to 50% success rate depending on when you catch it. So why do we want to focus on the negative? Find the positive, focus on the positive. Why do, do we have a cancer? Because of the karma, okay? What do we do? We ask forgiveness. Very simple. Find somebody that does spiritual healing, help release some of those spiritual debts. Have a car accident, what do we do? Great, maybe I'll get a new car out of this, okay? And on top of that, I have an opportunity to release some of this spiritual debt so I don't have to deal with it in the future. Lost a family member? Wow. I'm very, very so grateful for my family member that they can now go back to have dinner with God, to hang out with the angels in heaven. What an incredible, incredible blessing for them. How blessed is this loved one? How incredibly, incredibly blessed are they? I choose to be grateful for them. Yes, I am sad that this one is no longer in this physical realm. Yes, I am going to have some things I have to deal with, but I recognize that this change will somehow create a positive and I will move forward. Their soul is much wiser than my current third dimension understanding of this world and their soul chose to leave at this time to go have dinner with God, go hang out with the angels. Perspective is everything. We must not allow ourselves to get dragged down because it impacts tomorrow. We are creators. From the moment you came out of that womb, you were creating. And your spiritual debt and your spiritual virtue were automatically creating for you. As you grew up, you adopted and accepted what people told you, your teachers, your peers, your religions. They told you you accepted things, and that created more for you. Now, when we're stuck in our negativities, that creates tomorrow, the next day, and the next week. However, if you choose with grace, in that change, positive thinking, remove the karma. Positive thinking, remove the karma. You just keep staying there. The next day gets 1% better. The day after that gets 1.5% better. The day after that gets 2% better. And after 100 or so days, you're like 25 and 30% better. And after maybe a year, you're 100% better. Why? Because you applied positivity. You chose to see things from the higher perspective. You must recognize that nothing happens by accident. Everything happens for a reason. But you have a choice to embrace change with grace. All right. Now, as promised, I will offer everybody a blessing. I will also make available to everybody, if there is interest, a crown chakra blessing. Okay? Now, on that crown chakra blessing, I will include, let me find it, I received a new special calligraphy. Here it is. Greatest Forgiveness, Da Quan Shu. At this retreat, my teacher put extraordinary power in this card it's way higher than my power extraordinary power and I will um, place that on your spiritual head on the crown chakra blessing and offer a uh, crown chakra blessing for embracing change with grace for a specific request of your choice doesn't matter if it's a child passing or a job change or anything like that the honor fee is only a hundred and that's 
optional. You can contact me after this. Uh, I do these all over the world uh, at a distance very effectively. And so that's the, uh, the blessing uh, that you can take advantage of today if you're interested. In the meantime, I'm going to offer you a blessing now. So everybody where you're at, sit up straight, feet flat on the floor, back away from the back of the chair. Touch your tongue gently to the roof of your mouth. Close your eyes. Release, release, release the day. Breathe in positive. Release the negative. Breathe in the light. Release the darkness. One more time. Breathe in the positive. Release the negative. This blessing will be as appropriate to assist everybody that is watching live at this time to change their negative mindset about the subject of changes to a positive mindset about the subject of changes in our life. This blessing is as appropriate, and this will be a three minute blessing. Blessing again. If anybody has third eye and they would like to share what they saw, 
during that blessing. You're welcome to. That was quite huge, actually. Uh, it's quite heavy, actually, the karma related to defaulting to a negative thought when something happens that is unexpected. Um, it is, as indicated earlier, something that we have to train ourselves on. Just as we literally trained ourselves to default to a negative when change occurs, we can choose to default to a positive. I have watched my teacher do this numerous times. Uh, things drop, things spill, things break. When he's, you know, he's on stage, he's literally on camera, uh, hundreds of thousands of people watching, something falls, something breaks, something drops, instantly. Oh, great news. Oh, good karma. Oh, congratulations. Water spills. Financial blessings, right? Thinking. How do we respond to things? It's all how we respond to things. You know, when the, when the children spill things, how do we react? Do we yell or do we say, uh-oh, okay? So we need to do that for ourselves. We need to love ourselves in the same way. So congratulations on this blessing. Uh, Kristen says she got some. Uh, Phil Collins, welcome Phil, says he saw pine trees and a stony trail in the mountains. Wonderful. Great. And Becky says she saw white light uh, and you, Master Paul, just your outline. Amazing. And Kate Nicole said lots of peach color light. Kristen says she got some third eye reactions, some basic harmonics and other different sounds. Uh, Phyllis felt a lot of tingling in her crown and third eye and it's continuing. Okay. So definitely a lot happened. This is a very, very big blessing. So to remind you, if you are interested in a crown chakra blessing using this third dimension miracle healer card I just received, I will put that on your crown and send a two-minute blessing for uh, releasing the negative blockages associated with embracing change with grace. This will allow you Whenever any change occurs in your life, you will be able to think more positively. I might work on the verbiage a little bit so that we make sure there's a lot of positivity in your process when you experience change, okay? If you have something more specific in mind, I can maybe tailor the crown chakra specific to that for you. It's a very nominal honor fee, and it <laughs> will change your life. I can say that from truth and experience. So I will see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Love you, love you, love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. See you tomorrow.